Okay. okay. One, two. One, two. Okay, cool. That's the one. Uh, don't I need the questions to read, though? Um... Welcome, Joyger. In today's video, we're going to be doing a NFT beginner Q&A thing. We have Mr. Mark Gerbino. This is his podcast set up for the MGC podcast. I'm going to throw up a Hello. screenshot of our photo uh, together we just did. So we just recorded a full fucking two-hour podcast about <laughs> me, about NFTs, about spirituality, psychedelics, drugs, all the things. So I'm really, really excited for you guys to see that. Um, shit, yeah. So thanks for being on. Yeah, thanks for being on. <laughs> Get the hell. Yeah, you're welcome. Fire. Thanks okay, for so. being on. The way we're going to do this is going to be sort of like a game show. He's going to be asking questions. I'm going to be answering questions. If you're beginning the NFT space, if you've been in the NFT space for only less than six months, you need to watch this video. Cool. All right, I'm ready. Okay, from the future because I've forgotten this interview. If you haven't smashed the thumbs up button, please do so. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's get back to it. All right, man. So I see what's going on. I see like cryptocurrencies. I see like I see what you're doing on your channel. I I want to know why why NFTs? Why are they? The, why is it the next like big thing? What what, what why? Wonderful question, Mark. Wonderful question. Um, for anyone wondering why NFTs, what, why is this going to happen? I want you guys to visualize this. So if you think about iPhone upgrades, if you think about Snapchat upgrades, new filters, things like that. It's just the natural next step. No one questions why Snapchat did this new upgrade. Like there's one that I always think about. There's an NFT face filter thing or not NFT, sorry, Snapchat or Instagram filter thing. So you can put it up to a picture and their eyes will start moving and their mouth will start moving. And people just were like, oh my God, it's crazy. But no one was like, this is weird. You know, we you shouldn't do this. For most people, they're just like, oh, nice, cool. And it's kind of weird because they can bring back like dead people and like oh, pictures and stuff. So it's kind of weird. But anyways, it'll be like the next natural step. We're going digital. Everything's going digital. It's it's a fact. You, you really can't argue that. Everything's going digital. Honestly, we're, we're just so early. It's a little bit hard. So you have to think about it in stages like that. Same with like Neuralink. When Elon Musk had that little interview thing, and he was like, oh, like, well, it's not going to be this big crazy thing. It's yeah. just going to be the next thing we do. So we are very, very, very very early that's how i like to think about this you're almost too early if you're thinking about it in a very literal way you will not make it. you have to think in an innovative mindset here what gives nfts value though so what gives nft value is nft companies are very much like startups like businesses like brands um so you have to have a business savvy team so this is one thing that people overlook uh, an example everyone's been telling me about has in twitter especially in discords mutant cats has taken a big fat l apparently i guess the founders are being weird maybe they're having like not cold feet, but like, damn, we didn't really realize what we were getting ourselves into. And I think a lot of projects are in that space right now. They've been in the space for a while and maybe they're not having the same success as Doge Pound or something. And they're like, fuck, dude, like, what do we do? No one really gives a shit. There's too many projects. And the problem with all the new people, they're trying to bounce into all these different categories. And something that Alex Becker, I'm sure you guys have heard of, on, he's a big NFT YouTuber. Um, he says, if you want to win in any, in any world, you find three or four things, you get really fucking good at them or even one thing. And you hit a fucking home run with those. You're not going to hit a home run if you're looking at 14 different projects minimum. You know, a lot of people are in like 75 discords. Pick a couple, learn everything about it. That's what I do. There's three or four projects right now that I'm very involved in. Low key, no one knows about them. I don't talk about them just personally for me. And that's how you're going to win. And with NFT brands and companies, there's a reason Gymshark is a massive fitness brand. They focus on brand. They focus on their athletes. They focus on their community. They do uh, crazy pop-up stores. They do all these like shows and all this shit. And they're focusing on the long term. And so Gymshark will be around. And then there's other projects like whoever and if or like whoever fitness company brand that no one really gives a shit about. And they haven't focused enough on brand, on people wanting to be in the community. So that's what's going to build real value. So people think about utility, short term utility. Am I going to get staking? That's not what you should be thinking about. That's a very small, small, like closed minded way of thinking about NFTs. you got to think macro. You have to think macro. Mm. So if. Well, how would you. How would you buy an NFT? Because if you want to, you know, like I really like what you said. That's, that's really good. Stay focused on one kind of thing. How would you go about buying one? So right now, the main the main points or the main websites right now are OpenSea and SoulSea. Those are the two big ones. There's also IMX. There's all these other little ones. But right now, the all the volume is on OpenSea, which is Ethereum's blockchain, and Solana a little bit. Solana's having a little bit more because Ethereum's having these crazy gas fees. Ethereum was down for a while and NFTs didn't pick up. So people were like, wait a fucking second. I thought if NFT was, or if, if Ethereum went down in price, people would buy more NFTs. What happened? And that was like the general sentiment. And what I want to tell you guys about strategy is there's a reason I do strategy videos almost weekly because you have to change your strategy every week. It, the world of NFTs moves so fast. A strategy that worked last week won't work next week. So as far as buying an NFT, you set up a MetaMask wallet or you set up a Phantom wallet. 
All you have to do is literally Google Phantom Wallet or Google MetaMask Wallet. You click download. You set up an account like any any fucking website. You get an account. You get your seed phrase, which is going to be like your ultra secret code. All the stuff is right there. It's very, very simple. So if that's something you're too scared to get into, likely NFTs is not the space for you. So that's the reason I actually haven't made a video on how to set up a MetaMask Wallet because there are little lessons in here. It's kind of like adults when they didn't tell their kids something because they need them to learn it on their own. When you set up a MetaMask or a Phantom Wallet, you need to understand that's stage one and that's stage one of confusing things. So if, if confusing things aren't your shit and you're not into risky shit that's a little bit sketchy, NFTs aren't your world because this is a very sketchy casino what you're entering right now. But as soon as you as soon as you make that wallet, then you go straight to OpenSea.io or Solsi, and you just type that on Google, and then you just make an account, just like every other website. Okay, so if you want to get into this, if you're ready to make, take those risks, how would you realistically get started? My advice for everyone getting started because this is a very this is a very very asked question, especially in the last couple of weeks. I've gotten so many new people. If you're just getting into NFTs, you're just hearing about it for the first time, especially, you need to spend three to six months at minimum learning, observing before you implement anything. And when you do, do not throw in 50% of your of your entire net worth. You throw in five, 10, five, 10 percent, you know, a few hundred bucks. Well, you, OK, that's not true. You probably should save up like three grand first and that. But that three grand needs to be 10 percent of you. Right. So don't mm. just get three grand. And say, OK, now it's NFT land. No, no you need to save 20,000 yeah. or whatever and then throw a few thousand. NFTs are not cheap. They are expensive. They're very expensive. And another reason for that is because if you buy an NFT and it's peak volume and everyone's buying NFTs at the same time, you're probably going to go through something called a gas war and you're probably going to lose. And a gas war is basically someone who has more money than you is going to pay a little bit more in gas because they want their transaction to go through. And whoever's like the miner is, they're going to choose them over you and you're going to lose your gas, which can be thousands of dollars, sometimes or hundreds of dollars. And you won't even get the thing you were trying to get. You'll buy an NFT and you won't even get it because someone else bought it before you and their gas was more than you. Maybe they clicked on it first and you'll lose that gas fee. So that's really important to think about. It's a very, very, very expensive casino NFT world. So if you don't have a lot of money, you need to spend more time getting more money. So get a fucking job, get a second job, get a third job, do what you need to do and get some money first. That's required if you're going to be in NFTs. It sounds very risky. And it is. So I mean, so then like, okay, then like, how would you go about buying an, what NFTs should you buy that question shouldn't be there's a better question here so i, I actually i set you up with that one because i want you to set me up i set you up i, set, I, I, I fucked i fucked mark sorry <laughs> in my own podcast studio <sighs> rip well the better question should be which project should i be looking at to learn more about right so basically same question just a little bit more specific so when Alex Becker, when Journey Crypto, when Elio Trades talks about a project, what I do, what my personal strategy is, I pull out my notes app. There's a real notes app, or not there's not. There's a real notes pad that I have on my phone, sorry, <laughs> where I write down, I have probably 40 projects on there, 40 projects, cryptos, tokens that they've talked about multiple times over the last six months. And again, you have to spend months researching and shit. Those are the projects I've been spending a little bit of time researching. I've narrowed that down to probably three or four that I like. When the bear market comes and everything fucking goes downhill, NFTs drop by 95%. Doge Pound was at 4 Ethereum. It's going to be trading at 0.2 again. That kind of shit, okay? Everything's going to drop. That's when you buy those projects that they've been talking about that have kind of faded into the nothing because they talked about it four months ago. But you were listening because you're watching my channel. I fucking told you and you're going to listen. And you're going to write these things down. And when you buy those projects that they've been talking about because they're fucking smart. They really are smart and they are onto something. But it's never important. It's, it's never the move to just buy what they say. You listen to what they say and you apply it way later down the road when there's a better entry point. I'll hook you up with a couple though because there are some that I do want you to think about but I don't want you to buy because cool. a lot of these are very expensive right now. Bungie's, Bungie Project is one that's not actually that expensive right now compared to the other two. Doge Pound and Doodles or other projects. What I want you to do next is go straight to Google, type in Bungie or Doge Pound or Doodles and look at every single thing they've done in the past five months and figure out why I just told you you should look at those projects. Because there is a very, very specific reason. I've actually covered all three on my channel. You can go to the Brutally Honest Review for D Bungie, Doge Pound and Doodles. You can watch all of them. You'll figure out why I like them. And when you do, apply that strategy to your mindset. You, you're saying a whole bunch of shit I don't understand. So like, what's, give me the lingo. Great question. Great question, Mark. I actually made an entire NFT beginner lingo video. It's on my channel. I think it's actually the main video. So if you go to my channel, it's that first video. It's like NFT for beginners. I have a playlist for beginners. There's like seven or eight videos there. That's a great place to start. I feel like this this is something everyone wants to ask, but no one actually says. Are we going to make it? If, 
you continue watching this channel and channels like NFTverse, Giancarlo tokens or Giancarlo buys tokens or something, if you're watching channels that aren't, hey, you should buy this coin, buy that coin, thousand X coin here, thousand X coin there, where they're not teaching you anything, they're just telling you, hey, buy this project because they paid me, you know? If you're watching these kind of videos where you're learning actual information, your chances of making it to the moon are much higher, but probably not, let's be honest. Most of us will not make it. I'm probably not gonna make it. Even though I know all this shit about NFTs, it's way harder to implement because it's all about timing. There's 75 mm -hmm. factors that I can't control. If I like Doge Pound, I can't control the floor price dropping 90%. It's just not something it's in my control. So if you like yeah. a project, you stick with it, you buy, you hold your convictions and you hodl. Hopefully that's the way you're thinking about NFTs. But as far as we're all gonna make it, depends how long your time frame is. If you're thinking 10, 20 years, and you're able to actually stick to it for 10 to 20 years with me because I'll be here in 20 years, then yes, you will likely make it to the moon. I don't know if you're gonna make it to Mars, but if you stick with me, you'll probably make it. Okay, then aside from like, you know, collecting, flipping, selling, whatever, aside from all that, how do I make my own NFTs? That's a wonderful question. That's actually a super common question. A lot of people are asking this question. And I think it's actually really cool to, some people are saying, I just wanna make an NFT and I wanna just try it out. I wanna dabble. That's okay. That's what I did in the beginning. I did this way long ago in the summer with my NFTs, but it's very simple. It takes 30 seconds, literally 30 seconds. You go to OpenSea. Well, for OpenSea, I know this because I personally did it. SoulSea's a little bit, I think there's a couple more steps, but essentially you go to OpenSea or SoulSea, you click create NFT, and that's it. You pay the upfront gas fee, and that's literally it. I want to ask you my own question. Okay. Uh, how much risk is there in making your own NFTs, own NFTs versus buying and selling other people's? So it depends what you're trying to get out of it. If you make your own NFTs, you're looking to start your brand. That's what I did. I made my NFTs. I want to do travel stuff, travel photography. That was a few months ago before I became an NFT YouTuber. But if you want to just create NFTs, it's a great way to learn about the NFT space from a different perspective. And I'm all about perspective. Get as many perspectives as you can. So I think it's a great idea. If you want to get into the NFT world, just don't go in with expectations to sell all of them. Um, just go in with like legitimate realistic standards and just say, I'm here to learn. I'm here to do all the things. I'm just here to like learn about everything, you know? And it's just like, but it's just like posting on like Etsy or eBay. You just click create and that's, that's really it. So it seems pretty, uh, it seems pretty, um, I don't want to say risk free, but yeah. a lot safer and more fun than, you know, flipping, selling, yeah. buying. And it's and a couple hundred bucks. You pay the gas fee up front typically and it's a hundred or 200 bucks, I think at most. And then you're good forever. You can post as many as you want after that. Now, can you pinpoint exactly why someone's NFTs wouldn't sell? Yeah. So people who are in the space who have been Maybe they put their collection up a month ago. They haven't made a single sale. What you need to think about is why the fuck would they buy your NFT? Why would they? You know, you need to focus on brands, on your socials. What are when people come to your page? When they leave your page, they should be like, "Damn, I wonder if I wonder if they have an NFT because I want to be part of that. I want to support them." If that's not the, if the feeling they're getting from your brand, then one, you haven't been doing it long enough. I've been doing NFT or I've not NFT. I've been doing YouTube since 2010. My brand has been being built for the past few years. I've been working on that. And so you likely haven't spent enough time. I'm going to just go ahead and say 95% of you haven't been here long enough. That's the reason. Um, the second reason is you haven't filled a niche that needs to be filled. If you're answering a question that doesn't need to be really answered or it's already been answered, you're not solving a problem, then who gives a shit? You know, why would they support you? If you're not doing something helpful, if they're not learning something, then that's the main problem. So let's talk about someone who is that you can actually look at as a legitimate example. That's not me because I've also done these things. The Sydney Espo. She's one of the best NFT artists that I've seen in the space. She's a female. There's not that many females in the space. So she fills two niches there. She's an NFT artist who understands content. She makes content that is about art, about how to do NFTs. And she's also leading the charge for females, which and is she's dope. genuine too. Yeah. And she's genuine. It's, it's all about transparency. She's honest and she's being helpful. You know, if you're not actually being helpful, you think you're, there's a lot of people who think they're being helpful, but a lot of them are just fucking re-saying re everything Gary Vee said, you know? So if you're just saying that, you need to get to a point where you're no longer watching YouTube videos. Even if it's me, you're no longer watching me because it doesn't matter, okay? So that's where you want to get to. That's the, the long-term play. But remember, long-term play can sometimes be a decade. You Like, that's just something you have to think about, and that needs to be ingrained in your head that just because you don't get it next year or the year after that, I mean, you understand this. Like, oh, you've been doing podcasting for a minute, and it's, it's fucking hard. It takes forever. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a grind. It really is. Um, Okay, I mean, like, I don't think anyone really understands what this is yet. What's the metaverse? That's a great question. So the metaverse is a arbitrary, futuristic idea of what NFTs will turn into one day and what the world will turn into one day. The metaverse, very simply, is a more digital version of today. Right now we have phones, we have these things. Everything digital is here for the most part. Everything is digital here. If you don't have your phone, 
it's a very realistic fucking go hiking and like go to bars. That's that's life without a phone, right? And the the metaverse will be more of like an avatar style, like a Ready Player One, where shit is just that's what the reality is. That's just life at the moment, you know. And it won't be crazy, as I said earlier. It'll be in stages, you know. Things will happen. NFTs are going to be the social currency. So in the same way, we have followers, we have likes, we have verification check marks. Those are the social currencies right now. It'll be NFTs. What projects are you into? Do you like this project? Are you part of this brand? Are you part of that brand? Why are you part of this brand? If you follow me and you're like, yo, I want to know what Cade's into. What What is he really about? And he goes, oh, he's into these four projects. Let me see why. And there's there has to be a reason, right? So that'll be kind of what it is, especially for people who are like, you know, influencers or whatever in the space. You're going to want to know why they're part of these projects. And the cool thing about NFTs is if you know their public wallet address, you can see it, you know? And for a lot of people, it matters. Like Mark has this beautiful fucking studio but let's be honest, not that many people are going to see it. No. Now, if you, unless you watch his YouTube videos or you've been here in person, you're not going to see it. In the metaverse, anyone in the fucking world can see it and your chances of being seen like that are way, way higher. So that's, that's one reason people are going to want NFTs. And until then, 95% of people are not going to be interested in NFTs until it's a real thing. Humans are very good at being post-reactive. We don't like being proactive. We don't like doing things before we need to. That's a huge problem. So if you're able to think about things beforehand and actually take real action, that's where you're going to win. Yeah, we think very short term. We, yes. We don't we don't usually think long term, which mm -hmm. is something you're going to have to do. Um, so what about you, man? You got any NFTs you're currently selling? I do. I have two photography NFT collections. Um, they are they were made way back in the summer. That was before I was doing like NFTs like I am now. And as far as future plans for like future endeavors with them, those will be more of access keys. So I talked about this a few weeks ago before access tokens and access gaming utility stuff was becoming a thing. I told you guys in a video, we're moving away from gaming or we're moving away from avatars, PFB, 10K collection projects. It's going to be more into utility, ecosystems, access. That's what my NFTs are going to be about. My NFT photography is essentially a access key to my brand which right now is just starting. So if you believe in me, you need to think long-term with where I'm gonna be. I have a lot of fucking things planned. At some point, I wanna have an actual NFT collection, which will be a mix between 55 different styles of NFT projects, you know, have avatar uh, things, or have things about utility, ecosystems, you know, games, music, all the things. I'm, gonna, I'm keeping a very, very, very macro view of everything, and I'm making little notes every day. I'm making little notes. What is this gonna, how's this gonna apply to my project? So I want my project to be the Gymshark of the fitness world, but in metaverse world and not for fitness, obviously. But like that was a little yeah, stupid. Yeah. That was a stupid no, 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 I get it. I want it to be the project. And for that to happen, it's going to take me at least a decade. Gary Vee has been working on his brand for 20 years, 20 fucking years. He started doing wine 20 or 30 or whatever it was. Yeah, 20 years ago. yeah, that's, that's right. where his brand started. There's people who have been there since wine fucking library. Okay. And yeah. even if you weren't there from the beginning, you can watch and see. And it's cool because he documented everything. I'm better at documenting than Gary Vee well, because I started now because the internet already exists. Like, it's not really because I'm amazing. It's just because I saw him do it and I copied him. I literally just copied him. I said, okay, so if I'm going to be big one day, I got to bet on myself. I should just record now. You can find videos from 10 years ago from me. You can find videos from one year ago from me where I'm on podcast saying, I don't know what the fuck to make videos about, but I have to yeah. make videos because I want to be here in 10 years. So I guess we're just going to film me making breakfast, you know? Yeah. It's like you want to make mistakes before you're ready because you don't want to start like, if you start when you have all the gear, all the stuff, and then you make mistakes, you look like an idiot. Start before you're ready. 100%, yeah. 100%. But um, I think that might be it. That might be it. All right, guys. Well, um, I hope you guys learned something. If there's any more questions you guys have about NFTs, please drop in the comments below. I do look at the. Com I look at every single comment. Actually, I'm or I'm still responding to all the comments. I'm gonna try and do that as waste long as I fucking his can. time. Waste my fucking time. Take all but my like, fucking time. But like, how many comments do you usually get? Um, on YouTube videos, probably anywhere from like average of 10 to 50. All right, put like 500 comments. Okay. That'd be crazy. Can you imagine? If we can break 100 likes on this video, I want to make 100 likes the average. Right now, our average is anywhere from 40 to 60. I think we can bump that to 100, but I need your fucking help for that. So smash the like button. Follow fucking Mark because if you're not following him and you're not subscribed to his channel, you're going to miss the podcast with me and you're going to miss good. his fucking content because in this podcast, I remember vividly there was a moment, multiple moments actually, but one that comes to my mind where I was sitting there staring at him. You're going to be able to see this oh on the podcast. Oh my gosh. Well, you might not. It depends how you edit it, but Making there's a blush. scene where he's talking and he's, he's on this like two or three minute rant and I'm just looking at him and I'm just like... <laughs> this motherfucker is so good at being a podcaster. It's crazy. So he will be here. He's one of my long-term plays. I only support probably three or four people that I'm looking at long-term. He's one of them. You should be subscribed to his channel. And so 
we appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, just subscribe, do whatever you want, but literally smash Cage like button, like button, like go to your computer and punch it. Don't even like it with the mouse. Just punch your computer. If it breaks, blame <laughs> him later, okay? <laughs> That's literally what he's asking you, and he's not, all right? Anyone that subscribes gets a free PlayStation. I'm just oh, kidding. Shit. I'm just kidding. Max, you said it. I'm just kidding. He, he said it. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> All it. right, guys. Well, I appreciate everyone watching. Yeah, hit the subscribe button. Um, and until next time, continue on your joyage. Continue to learn and be grateful you're alive watching this video. Hell yeah. Peace. Fuck yeah.